Hi everyone. Since you asked us to show you how to build a sound pole like this one, that's what we're going to go through today. Stay tuned and come along for the journey. Now we need to determine how wide the piece of acrylic needs to be to mount our components. We're using a five inch PVC pole and the interior dimension of that is four and a half, which gives us four and a half inches of acrylic to mount all of our components to. Now that we know we have four and a half inches, we need to determine is it going to be this part of the acrylic or this part of the acrylic. In other words, am I cutting it this way or am I cutting it this way at four and a half inches? In order to make a determination how you want that to be, merely place your components on the acrylic and see how they look and see if you're okay with it. You may be okay with it, I might not, but it's all up to you and how you arrange it. If this is long ways, it gives you more area to move your components and mount them. If you want to do it narrow, if it's four and a half this way, it's just going to tighten up the area that you have to put all the components on your board. So right now it could be four and a half cut this way or four and a half cut this way. For today's exercise, I'm going to cut long, the long part of the acrylic, just because it gives me more room should I flub something up. So I'm going to cut four and a half inches on the long side of the acrylic. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape on this and mark it, and then we're going to take it outside and cut it. So there's many ways to cut acrylic. You could score a line with the utility knife and try and snap it. I've had good luck with that before, but because I have a Dremel tool, that's what I'm going to use. Just be aware that Dremel tools are a dangerous item. This thing goes up to 35,000 RPM. And when you're cutting acrylic, the blade is so thin and fragile, if it were to break or shatter, a piece of it could fly up and hit you. So please make sure you wear your safety goggles gloves, and even if you have a hood like I do, put on a hood, and that way you'll be sure you'll be safe. When you cut the acrylic, don't stand over the spinning blade, and make sure you have your shield or face guard on. Remove the tape, make sure you don't pull off the plastic protective coating. You need to leave it there while you drill. If the edge has melted plastic on it, just run your hand across it and take it off. Now that it's cleaned up, you want to position your items on the board. What fits best for you? So I put my timer at the top with the amplifier next to it, the FM receiver, the buck converter, and then the power supply. I like that arrangement, so that's the way I'm going to put my items on the board, or excuse me, on the plexiglass or acrylic. And to keep them there, I'm going to tape them down. You tape them down because once you get them positioned where you need them, you're going to go to the other side of the acrylic, and you're going to mark the holes. Clear acrylic is easy to use. You can get it at a big box store. Uh, you can see through it and mark the holes for everything that you're going to mount. I use clear acrylic whenever I do a controller build if needed. Let's go on to drilling the holes. I'm going to put some blue tape on the back side just to make sure when we drill that we don't shatter the PVC or cause any problems. This will help it not to chip or cause any issues. Well, you're going to remove this in a minute, but literally you can still see the dots, so it's not a big deal.
So if you're wondering which drill bit I use for that, I went to my drill kit and I found a bit that was just barely as big or barely bigger than the holes. That told me which bit to use. Now all the boards are different. This one's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit bigger. There's different sizing. So get a bit that works for you for all the boards you're drilling. Now that we have everything drilled, you can take the uh, protective cover off. And to do that, you can just grab a hold of the tape that you left on and it just peels right off. Comes right off. Your boards all, your excuse me, your acrylics all drilled, ready to mount your boards. Let's get that done. Now that we have the acrylic all prepared and ready to mount the components, let's get to that. But first, off camera, I went ahead and soldered on the antenna wire and the two power leads needed for the FM receiver. As you can see, it's just three little dots of solder, so it's not a big deal to do. Let's go ahead and mount this one first. Remember, we marked the holes and drilled the holes where everything was going to go. These are the standoffs from the kit that I had. What I did is uh, I'm putting one screw in the back and then I'm putting the standoff and one in the other corner and the standoff and then literally just take the board and snap it on right there. This is tedious work. Take a breath and it'll work out perfectly for you. Then you take these tiny little nuts and one by one you put them on and screw them down. You're going to do that for every board and the power supply. And once you're done with that, we'll move on to the next phase of this. With all the components mounted on the acrylic, we're now ready to start wiring up all of the boards. But I'd like to check and make sure that I did a good job soldering. To do that, I'm going to use a multimeter and check continuity on the two wires that I soldered onto the FM receiver. It's a positive and negative line, and they should not have continuity. The multimeter will, when checking continuity, will zero out when there is continuity, meaning there is a connection between the wires. It may fluctuate between 0, 1.1 and 0 0.2, but in most cases it'll just go to zero. So checking these two wires, I expect to get, I don't expect to get, 0 0.00, 0 0.1, I expect to get 0L, meaning there is no continuity. And that's exactly what I have, 0L, which tells me that I did a great job soldering these up and we're ready to wire everything. We're going to start with the connection from the timer to the power supply. I went ahead and put two of the ferrules on here because they're very small and very hard to deal with. So it took me a little more time than I thought. I'll show you how to put those on in a second. But they just go in the connector. As you can see, it inserted in the hole. You back the screws all the way out so you can get the connectors fitting or the ferrules fitting. Now, ferrules are an interesting discussion point. Some people like them. Some people hate them. Um, I like them, and I use them whenever I can. Point of interest is it's a requirement in the EU to use ferrules when um, wiring low voltage like this. Now that I have a ferrules inserted and tightened down on the timer, I'm going to go ahead and put ferrules on the other end. Just take my wire strippers and strip them off. I'm going to use gray ferrules on this one. Again, wire size dependent as the ferrules are. Um, and also if they'll fit in the connector. One thing to note, I did um, when I did drill these holes, some of them were off a little bit. So if you drill the holes in the plexiglass or the acrylic and you're off, don't fret it. Just drill them a little bit bigger so you can make everything fit. So there, the ferrules are on the wire. You put it in the end of the crimper and it makes a four-way crimp against the wire. And I also like to crimp the plastic. Not necessary, but I do it anyway. So once I have the wires all crimped and ready to go, I'm, literally, I'm just going to put the wire right underneath the um, lug on the power supply, the positive and the negative. Just slide it right under the screw and then just tighten up the wires right here on the screws. 
So right now everything's wired for low voltage for the PSU. Two hours later. Okay, I've completed wiring the sound system. It's ready to go. All the components are functioning well. I followed this wiring diagram and if you do, your system will function as well. As you can see, the system is functioning. We have power on the timer, we have power on the push for sound, and the speakers are all wired up and ready to go. You don't see power on the tuner or the FM receiver because it doesn't come on until I press the button. When I press the button, the tuner comes on and the amplifier comes on. There are two buttons on the tuner. One is volume, one is tuner. So you can tune it to your radio station used for your show. There is also a volume control on the amplifier itself. Use both of these in concert with FPP to get the best you can out of your sound system. Let's push the button and see what we get. I hope you can see how the sound system now works and the volumes work in concert with each other. Our next video is going to be on putting these items into the sound pole. We're going to show you how to build that and make it your own. Thanks for watching.